Welcome to the live chat. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so let's see who's in here. It's a little hot and the air condition is on. Hello, C to Soul. Let me see if I can get on the chat now from my laptop. I can see you guys. I need to turn down the volume. Got it. Hello, everybody. I'm gonna to have to look down a lot. Maybe I need to put this up a little higher. That way I won't be just looking down. Yeah, that's better. So let me know if you all can hear me fine. Skinny Boy Randy is here. Garden Love is here. Benny, hello. Seed to Soul. Starduster 2. Miller's Garden. Miss G is here. Garden Love. I, hey, Garden Love. Nick Thomas in the middle of the map. Okay, and everybody's telling me they can hear me. Hey, Peanut. So can you uh, hear me? Yeah, you said you can hear me, Peanut. Okay, thank you guys very much. First of all, I want you guys to know that I was really nervous about doing the chat. Not about talking with you guys or if I had something valuable to say. I had no doubts about that. I was just afraid that I was not going to be able to get on because I heard that people have trouble getting on the first time and I'm a little bit challenged. I rely on my adult children to help me with computer matters. But I want you guys to know that I was able to do this all by myself and I'm just thankful to God that everything went through and I had some people to uh, give me some pointers too. So I wanna uh, thank them. You all know who you are. Uh, today, I wanna just tell you guys a little bit more about me. And then as the title of this uh, live says, we're going to declare war on insects today and we're going to win. You know, for the last week or so, I've been doing videos about trapping slugs that have gone uh, crazy uh, in my food forest because of the fact that we had a very mild winter and then a very rainy season. And so what happens when you get that combination of a mild winter and then a real rainy season. It mass produce snails, which morph into slugs. So I've already shared with you how we can make the slug juice. 
And if you're new to my channel, if this is your first time visiting me, if you go back and look at my last three or four videos, you'll see how I made the slug juice. And you also can use beer. Um, I just didn't want to go out with my city being on lockdown. I didn't want to go out and buy beer, so I wanted to use what I had. Oh, Starduster made the slug juice. Did you catch any slugs, Starduster? I have my air conditioner on, but I'm going to turn a little fan on. I'll be right back. So, who caught some slugs using my slug juice? Oh, hey, hey, Barefoot Gardening. I'm glad you're here, too. Hey, Supreme Gardening family, if I miss somebody, let me know. I know that there are things that I can do, like set up moderators that can assist me, and I'm asking you all to bear with me, and as I learn more, I'm definitely going to be sharing more with you, you know, once I figure out all this technology. So, let's get back to fighting the insects. The first thing I want to tell you guys about is how you can minimize mosquitoes and mosquito larvae around your property, especially if you have a water catchment system, like a rain barrel, okay? So what I recommend are these mosquito bites. Now, I buy these, I'll make sure that you can see it. I buy these at, um, on Amazon, um, the big store, the big online store that starts with an A, because I heard that we're not supposed to be shouting out, stuff like that. So, but you can purchase it at the big box stores. I've seen them in smaller sizes. I've seen them in packs like little donuts with holes in the center, and you can just drop that down or break a piece off. But I like these because this would last me a whole year. And I just take a, about a half a cap full, and you can see they're little pellets. And you put them into your rain barrels or your whatever you use, five-gallon buckets, garbage cans. My rain barrels need to be repaired, so I'm using 55-gallon drums. And to be honest with you, I like using the drums as opposed to the $256 rain barrels that I bought that were because I have to bend down all the time to dispense the water out of it. So I kind of like dipping it from the top and then I get some exercise. Okay, so take a screenshot of this if you're using your cell phone. If you have problems with mosquitoes, this will kill the larvae too. Have any of you ever looked inside of your uh, water container and saw the little mosquito lars just wiggling around a little bit? Put this in there, and a half an hour later, all of them will be dead. So you won't be watering your plants and putting the lars right there in your plants. Okay. Bugs in the garden is the worst enemy. Yes, homesteader chick, I agree with you. Worms, bugs, they can devastate your garden. Now, I made another video. We talked about the slugs. Talked about the slug juice. I just taught you how to get rid of the mosquitoes in your rain catchment system. And by the way, let me share this with you. This will not hurt, hurt the birds or any kind of animals. For all of you people that are are really into Hamish Craft, all of you all that are real into, um, you know, not being cruel to animals, this will not hurt them whatsoever. If your dog drinks out of this or your cat, it won't hurt them. It has been biologically, um, how do you say it, guys, created so that it will only kill mosquitoes and mosquito larvae, and that's it. Okay? All right. Any questions about the lard? I mean, the um, mosquito bits. I think I saw somebody said fish will eat the mosquitoes, and that's very true in the lard. Uh, that's very true. That's why a lot of people have ponds on their property. 
and um, and and I'll put fish, you know, in it. Oh, thank you, Miss Green Organic Love. I'm gonna borrow something from Lead Farmer, and I have my grape juice, unsweetened grape juice he here. And whenever somebody makes a little donation, I'm going to take a sip of the grape juice and say cheers. Cheers to Miss Green Organic Love. Thank you. So now, just in case you get some mosquitoes on your property that you didn't kill with the mosquito bits, I want to share with you a natural, well, it's kind of a chemical, but nothing that will hurt you. A spray that you can make. And I hope my son-in-law is still here. We went camping a few years ago, and I have three adult children, if you don't know. All three, three of them are, I'm very proud of them, successful professionals. And they all married, and they all have two children each. So I have six grandchildren. And we went on a camping trip. And they had all their little expensive off and deep and all this kind of stuff. And I had my little bag of my little natural stuff. And they were just laughing at me. Well, <laughs> the mosquitoes became immune to that junk that they had. And everybody wanted some of my mosquito spray. But I wouldn't give them none of it. I gave the mosquito spray to my grandchildren every night I would spray them. And they had to get in their car, go to Walmart, leave the campsite. Oh, thank you, mama, daughter, sister. Cheers, unsweetened grape juice. Thank you so much. And so they had to go and buy some more of that off crap. And my, my babies, my grand angels, you know I love my grand angels. I would spray them with this mixture. And it was half water half any type of mouthwash and a few drops of essential oils that repel mosquitoes like lemon oil, lemongrass, and I love eucalyptus. I think it works the best. Okay? So, something on my eye. So, equal parts. Now, uh, some of you all may need something a little bit stronger and this will work too. I don't know what's on my face. You can use equal parts of beer, mouthwash, and Epsom salt. And you can also make a mosquito uh, repellent spray for your body. Just spray it on your clothes. I spray it on me every morning when I go out to work in my food forest. I put it in this little spray bottle, and I get these from that big store online that starts with an A. In fact, I have them on repeat order. Every three months, I get me three of these bottles, and I keep them in my little jacket pocket as I'm walking around, checking out my fruit trees, okay? I sprayed this for me in my little bottle in my other jacket. I have the next thing that I'm gonna move on to Simple little insects, can, you can keep them off of your fruit trees and in your garden beds with just a few drops of Dawn dish soap and some water and mix it up. Now, you know those little moths and Japanese beetles? Those things are the slowest, and I mean mentally slow. You can try to pick them up and they'll still come right back to you. So you can kill those with dish soap, okay? Now, let me tell you what I add to this mixture if I'm uh, trying to get something like aphids, because those little nasty little beasters are a little bit more difficult to kill. And what I do is I use a cap full in a gallon of water or a tablespoon of pure cold pressed neem oil. And I get this from that big store online that starts with an A. Or I get it from that big store online that has a lot of little merchants that starts with the E and ends with the bay leaf. Everybody got it? Because some of your same merchants on the big store online A 
and the big little store uh, that starts with the E and ends with the bay, they are selling the same thing. You wanna know how I know? I bought something from the E with the little bay leaf in it, and it came in an Amazon box. Not once, not twice, but three times. Oh, thank you, Starduster. Thank you so much. Cheers. A little grape juice. And there's another supply store called Greenhouse Mega Store. And some of the same merchants on that website is the same ones that I just told you about. Okay, so now I've taught you how to protect yourself with the mosquito spray. I've taught you how to, or shared with you, you some of you already know, share with you how to eliminate a lot of mosquitoes with the bits. We talked about the slugs and the slug juice. We talked about killing aphids with neem oil and the uh, Dawn dish soap. I'm gonna start putting some of this down on the floor. But I need to tell you this. When you're dealing with aphids, you need something that has a little power behind it. Not just this little, this has a good force to it here. This one, it's pretty good. And you can set this where it'd be a stream or a mist. And that's good for your little junior bugs is what I call them. But when you're dealing with aphids, you need something that has power where you're going to pump this sprayer, build up that power, and then, okay? Everybody got it? Any questions? Okay, good. And don't buy a cheap one. Don't do like I did. I bought several cheap ones, and they break. You might as well get you a good one. Spend about $10 on it, okay? Any questions so far? Okay, great. Now, somebody said neem makes fungus gnats brains discombobulate and they don't eat, mate, or defend themselves. Very good, you two. UT332, you are exactly right. You're exactly right. Now, in my last video, I think I told you guys about DE, Diet Tomacious Earth. That is good. Hey, there goes my mentor, Lead Farmer. Cheers. I'm drinking grape juice. Everybody help me out now. Celebrate. Thank you, Lead. Cheers. And um, by the way, if you would go to any one of my videos, you see my email address is Cheryl's Organic Food Forest at gmail.com and uh what was i saying that for oh and if you have a question on any of the things that i have gone over just email me and let me know i'm retired so i have a little bit more time than most of you that are still working and let me just stop here and say that i i was an educator for over 30 years. I just say 30 because I don't want everybody to know. Well, I'll tell you, I'll be 66 years old in a few months. And so that's all I have, I've ever done all my life, all my adult life. Taught beauty school, taught cosmetology, and helped train. That's okay, Led. I'm cool. You're here. I'm just thankful that you're blessing us to be here today. And um, so now I, I feel like I'm passing along some of my skills that I've accumulated and, and, and learned. Hey, Steve Rogers. Cheers. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Grape juice. Everybody, whatever you're drinking, coffee, tea, water. Cheers to Rogers. Thank you, Steve Rogers. Uh, so now I use this platform to try to help people. Now I'm going to back up. I know I'm jumping kind of all over the place, but I want, to, I want you to know a little bit about me, why I say that I'm an educator. Because when I started gardening, really, was, I say 30 years, but it was like 40 years ago, there was no internet. There was no computer for the public. There was no social media. 
there was no uh, space. What was it? Space? My space. Then Facebook. And now you got the gram. My kids call it the gram. The young people, but it's Instagram. And YouTube. I learned from old folks. And I learned from the library. Because as we were, you know, newly married, my husband and I, and, I and, and if you don't know, I'm a widow. I would go to the library and check out books and learn things that way. And then as we were able to afford books, I started buying books. This book was purchased in... The first copyright was 1999. Uh oh, almost dropped my laptop. 1999. I was really into flowers. And I married a man who was born and raised on a farm. So he knew how to do all that. I really didn't even help him in the garden. I just would, you know, shell the beans and preserve them and that type of thing. But he did all of that. And then I started learning more about gardening. And this book, I think I bought it in 1990, 1979. So I'm sharing with you young folks that this is how I learn. You all are so blessed that you have this medium today to learn so much more. And then as I grew, uh, grew more uh, financially stable, I started buying more books. And I have all these I want you to see. I want to learn about organic gardening because I want you guys to know I was not always an organic gardener. I didn't start gardening organically until I retired. I used miracle Grow, any little thing that they showed on TV that would make you instantaneously get these big vegetables and herbs, I would buy it. I was a sucker. I was a product junkie. I believed everything. And I didn't realize that I was not building my soil. And so once I learned that if I start composting everything that I couldn't uh, consume or dehydrate or pressure can or freeze, then if I put that back into the compost and put that back into the soil, you heard the scripture, ashes, ashes, dust, dust, it's true. That's when my garden skyrocketed, when I started using all natural ingredients. Thank you, the Miss Lady For Real. appreciate you being here. And I'm telling you, you're right, Led. We all need to start collecting books because we don't know what's going to happen. And I hope some of my children are here. If you are, say something. Because they'll tell you that I told them that Land Farmer 73 warned us last year about we need to be prepared for anything at all times. I don't want for nothing. I got a pantry full of food because I got prepared. If the power goes out, I'm prepared. I got candles. Mm -hmm. I know how to light a fire in my fireplace. It has a gas ignition switch, but I don't need it. Okay? So I'm just saying all this to tell you, just like we had to get prepared for what's going on in the world right now, we don't know when all of this will disappear. They tell me that you can't hardly buy any chickens right now because of the situation in the meatpacking houses and everybody getting really sick from that. So be prepared and educate yourself because this, this medium could be gone tomorrow. Here's another book. You don't want to get, you want some books that's going to help you no matter where you live, but then I'm a homeowner. So I've been in this house for 30 years. So now I want to learn how to grow stuff in Texas. Just showing you a part of my library. I didn't make any notes for tonight. All I did was put my props on the table. I knew what I was going to talk about. So I listened to some of the masters and people who have been growing in the Texas area for a very long time, and I bought this book on organic gardening. Then I don't want to hear, I don't, I don't want to hear what just one person or two people say, and that's why I tell you guys, you need to listen and watch the videos of everybody that you can, even if you don't like them, because there might be one thing that they teach you that will be valuable for you in your garden. 
So here's another author. Texas Fruit and Vegetable Gardening. Here's another one. I just started planting, and I got this one used on that big store on the internet that starts with the A. I got this one used, but it was in real good condition because I wanted to know about native plants to my area. And so I was able to buy 13 trees from a seller on Facebook who was selling native Texas trees for only $5, guys. I got, in the bushes and trees, I have three elderberries, two mulberries, aronia berry, native plums, one native persimmon, and I can't think right now, okay? But one day when I do Tuesday's fruit, which I'm doing every week, I'll show them all to you. I don't think I lost maybe two of them, but that's pretty good for $5. And I've seen some people on, on, on uh, YouTube that bought some little uh, elderberry bushes about this big, some little baby saplings. This man sold me trees that was about three feet tall, guys. I bought a building book just for those reasons. Very good, game nerd mom. I'm not that young, but... Oh, I missed it. I'm not that young, but I think she's saying she's a city girl. Yes, my third year gardening made a lot of errors and haven't given up. I go on thrift book dot com and buy old horticultural books very good that's the way to go here's another one growing good things in texas yes i listen to the youtubers mm -hmm. especially if you in zone 8a like me i'm gonna listen to you but still i'm gonna seek other people's opinion as well that's how i knew what fruit trees to buy people say hey she said hey miss cheryl i'm in the lady, I'm Lady Spa 123 in DFW. All right, woohoo! New to your channel. I'm on my husband's account and I am so happy to be on your live. I'm new to gardening. This is what I want to see. I believe, and I don't want to get all preachy for you, but I know my life ain't over. I had the worst kind of uh, breast cancer you can ever have. The one they said that if it went undetected for five more months, I would have been dead because it would have metastasized itself all over my body. That was 1992. There's a reason why I'm still here. And I'm telling you, it just brings me so much joy when I can get up and say, I helped somebody today. Let me see who I'm going to help today with this video. So thank you for saying that. I really appreciate that. So here's another one, growing good things to eat. I try to eat healthy, but you can look at me and tell I like to eat. <laughs> I love to eat, so I want to eat things that are healthy for me. But here's another one. Western edibles. Because I live in the Southwest. And it ain't too much in this book. I haven't grown. I've tried it all. But now I'm not experimenting. I'm growing what I know what works. So last but not, not least, I want to share this book with you. And any of you on my live tonight can use this book by Elliot Coleman. He tells you how to grow food all year long. And by the way, hey, Miss G, I think I just saw something. I sure did. Cheers, my friend. I'm drinking grape juice. Everybody cheers to Miss G. This guy is a monster. He is a beast. He will tell you how to grow food in Chicago. Is the Cedar Harlick in here? She told me she was going to be in here. She's in Chicago. And she's doing winter sewing, guys. This lady is doing winter sewing. And it's cold there still. And she's growing a lot of vegetables. So if you want to do that, Here's a nice book, and you can screenshot this or you can go back because I'm going to publish this video and you'll be able to get this information. And then last but not least, I got one more little book. And here it is. And this book and Lab Farmer 73 showed me how to keep a tree small and to keep 
as many trees as I want in my backyard. And I hope my children are on here because I text messages them because I want to give them a message. I love my children, but they thought their mama went nuts when she tore down, had someone tore down the sun deck. And when she got rid of all her grass and put cardboard down, and then I started getting free wood chips from chipdrop.com. And if you don't know that, you uh, can go to them and register. And I don't know, because we from all over the country in this uh, live, but I know for a fact in all of the Texas area, you can sign up for them. And I've gotten three loads of wood chips. I have no grass in my backyard. I started off slow, then I started you know, decreasing more and more of my lawn. And so this book helped me. I have 60 fruit trees, plants, and bushes, and vines. Now when I say vines, I have three Concord grapes. I don't count that as three, I count it as one. I have two muscadines, I count it as one. I, I, don't, I count the strawberries as one, okay? But I have a lot of trees. You all been seeing them on Tuesday's fruit. And so getting back to my kids, because they, they're adults, but they between 40 and 37. Now they're proud of me. They're proud of their mama. They, they see the vision now. And my youngest son, when he came over to help me with the shade cloth, even though we all are self-isolating, my oldest son said, nobody going over to mama's house. Mama's high risk, and we are not going to get her sick. So I haven't really physically held any of my grandbabies since February with spring break, when they went on spring break. But uh, what I want to tell you is, oh, somebody pressure canning carrots. She did her first water bath. Very good. I gave you the courage to buy a pressure canner. Girl, you're going to make me cry. That's my purpose in life, because I know I'm jumping around, but I was telling you about the cancer. God could have took me out. But he still has something for me to do. And I know I keep calling this young man's name out a lot, Lair Farmer, but it's true. He said, Michelle, you need to keep on sharing your skills. Show them how to can. And by the way, if you're new to uh, my channel, another wonderful canner. I know she wasn't feeling well the other day when I was in a live chat. Uh, Homestead Heart. She the bomb.com. She's much younger than me, and I told her I want to be her when she grow up, when I grow up. Because she, this lady is sucking the air out of cookies with a food saver and candy. And I said, dang, I could do that for my grandkids instead of just putting stuff in the freezer. So, yeah, I have a purpose in life. I think I concluded that, what I wanted to say about my children. And this little book right here helped me to learn how to prune trees to keep them small and still be productive. Okay, so I've shown you part of my library. And that ain't all of it. Some of the books, the older books are too raggedy. I didn't want to share them. But let me tell you a little bit more about me. Like I said, I'll be 66 in a few days. Homestead Heart made you buy some. That's right, Led. So I'm, I love to read, and I've always been good. I was an English major in college, dropped out, got married. But I did do something with my life, got my cosmetology license, became an instructor. But I'm also a writer, if you all didn't know. That's why I used to say my name all the time. Hi, I'm Cheryl Tally Moss. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Because I want to pick up my writer friends if they do a Google search. And in the description, I was always would say my whole name. So this is my daughter when she was 18. This is a hair care book. And the first six ladies that were in the um who commented in this video will receive this book and if you do i'll send it to you too the first six people because you can give it to your wife or your girlfriend and then here's my daughter again this is a second book and i by the way guys i publish these books myself tally publishing is me and this little logo on the back this is a silhouette of my five where is it five brothers i used them and made the company name after them but they didn't get no money out of it. And this book is still prevalent today. So the first 10 people that uh, jumped in on the chat and said something, I will send you this book. 
and I will put it in the comment sections who you are and then you can look in any one of my videos and get my email address and email me your mailing address and I will send these books to you. The first 10 people, the first six people. So the first six people will get both of them. The first 10 will get the other one. Anybody got a problem with that? Oh, Garden Love, yeah. I've gotten, I've learned how to do a playlist. So I have a playlist now Man, I stayed up from 2.30 one morning to about 7 o'clock till I figured it out. But I got it. So I have a whole playlist with my candy stuff. And as needed, I will be adding more um, candy videos. Okay. So let me get back to what I want to talk about. Okay, let's move on to some other things. Now, those of you that have greenhouses or you live in real wet climates, this is another product that I use. I'm switching gears. I'm moving on to fighting fungus. This is an organic pro product. It is called Serenade. Uh oh, uh oh. Thank you, Miss White Flower Homestead. Cheers. I'm drinking grape juice. Whatever you having, guys. Cheers to Miss White Flower. Um. You only need a little of this, and it stinks out of heaven, but it works. I had a powdery mildew in a moisture form in the greenhouse three years in a row. This year, I did a preventative strike. I started using it before I got the fungus, knocked it right out. So you can, if you're on your phone, you can screenshot this, or you can come back later and write it down. Serenade. And anytime you see uh, a product that you could ha that has multiple uses, you can use this fungicide in the garden for multiple diseases like black spots on your roses, uh, on your vegetables, fruits, flowering plants. You can use it on your fruit trees and your shrubs. Now, moving along, here's another organic product. If you see OMRI tested, then you know that it's manufactured for organic gardening. This is Monterey BT. This kills that cabbage worm. Everybody with me? It works. I've had this product about three years, guys, and it's still almost, it's over half full. You don't need a lot. Now, I know, you know, if you're on a fixed income like me, you might not want to buy all this stuff at one time, but some of you all got stimulus money. If you want to start organic gardening, I recommend that you take a little of that stimulus money and invest it in your garden. You won't regret it. Like I said, I've had this three years. And there's a, a line right here. If you look real close, I don't know if you can see that but it indicates how much I have left, okay? All right, let me go back. I'm, I'm logged out myself out of my video. Okay, now this is a new one that I tried. Live streaming. This is a new product. This is not organic. I am not using this product in my garden. Who is that? Oh, thank you, Leah Farmer. <laughs> thank you, sir. Cheers. <laughs> Great juice. I'm not using this in my garden. I'm using this on the perimeter of my privacy fence. This product repels everything from deers, to beavers, to birds, to rats, to mice, armadillos, skunks. It won't kill them, but it has a very nasty, pungent smell. It won't harm your plants or your animals, and it's biodegradable, and it's safe to use around food. But 
it will repel any nibbling, chewing, gnawing, browsing little hostile uh, little animals that try to eat up our, I call them my babies, because I grow almost everything from seeds. And when you put a seed in the soil and you watch it bloom and, I mean, grow and then flower and then produce a lot of tomatoes or peppers, those are my children. They're my babies. So I use this. My nephew told me about it, and I bought it from um, that big store that's a depot that got an H in front of the name. And I just used the whole bottle all around the perimeter of my privacy fence. And I didn't see anything in my area because my son bought me the ring doorbell, my youngest son, for Christmas. And I started seeing my neighbors showing videos of coyotes. Who is that? Game nerd mom, thank you so much. Thank you. I wasn't expecting this, guys. You're going to make me cry. Thank you. Cheers. Um, they, they were showing fox, coyotes, possums. I don't even know we had them in, over in this area. But we have still some vacant areas that haven't been developed yet. And um, they're, they're, they're tearing down, what do you call it, guys? Y'all know what I'm trying to say. Demolishing the woods to bring uh, more businesses and so who is that love skin and hair thank you so much cheers my friend thank you so all of these um these animals are losing their natural habitat so they're coming in where they smell people barbecuing and oh so they growing food over here so uh my my nephew recommended this and i haven't seen anything in my yard so I ran out, and then I started getting more alerts from the rings, uh, the neighbors that have it. And you actually see the fox and the coyotes and stuff coming up to the front porch and the ring, the ring camera capturing it. And one night when I saw that, when I got an alert, and my son-in-law showed me how to turn the alerts off so it won't interrupt my sleep, and I can just check them when I feel like it. I got up, and I went on that website that depot with the H in front of it, and I ordered this. So I said, it's time again. Now check this out. Then I found out that they have the granules. Because even though this will last for two or three months, even if the water hits it, this will last even longer. So I'm telling you, with your stimulus money, I'm making a suggestion. Buy some of this stuff now, and you won't have the problem. Oh, who was that? Bear? Is it Bear Foot Gardener? With Little Big Girl, or Big Little Girl? You, if you in here, you know who I'm talking about. She saw a mouse <laughs> by her compost and almost had a heart attack. <laughs> get you some of this, or get you some of this, and be armed. And what the, what what's in here? Let me read it to you. It has it's a unique blend of egg solids, clove, garlic oil, fish meal, fish oil, magnesium salicylate, meat, and some other waters. Vinegar and wintergreen oil. That's the same thing they put in fish emulsion, wintergreen oil to try to damp it down the smell. What happens is they start sniffing it and it does something to their nasal passages and it start burning and they run the other way. And then they tell all the friends, oh, don't go over there with Miss C or Lady Cheryl. She got some stuff around that yard to make you sick. You know, animals talk to each other. It's like we do. <laughs> I swear to God, I went out, went out my garden and um, I got attacked by birds. I thought I was in a movie. The birds were just swarming all around me in a circle, like, we're gonna make her go back in the house. <laughs> I swear to God. And I just stood by my back door and I said, not today. Not today, I don't know what you all digging up my seeds or whatever it was, I was not gonna have it. Because my daughter had told me that that happened to her when she, uh, last summer or summer before last, when she uh, had a lot of tomatoes and the birds would peck it. 
And I told her, all you need to do is put a bird bath out. Because they really don't eat tomatoes. They're pecking it for the juice. They'll peck on your strawberries for the juice. So get you a bird bath, change the water every two days or so, and if you furnish them with some water, they'll leave your fruit alone. I promise you, they'll leave it alone. Any questions on these two items? Any questions? Thomas or Army myself getting arrested for shooting. Who's gonna shoot somebody? Oh, the animals? <laughs> Born to Grow TV. Cheers, my friend. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm drinking grape juice. The grape juice is making me sweat. <laughs> Oh boy, okay. We can't see them, can you put them in the description? But, oh yeah, you all couldn't see this? Can you see it now? But I will put them in the description box. I'll put a list of everything. Okay, is that Skinny Boy Randy? Cheers my friend, thank you so much. Now this is my son guys. We got a movie star in the house tonight. Did you all know that Randy, skinny boy Randy, is in a video for YouTube? And he getting paid too. I told him, don't go Hollywood. I've been on TV before. Don't go all Hollywood on us. He said, Michelle, I've been there, done that. I'm not going to do that. But I am so proud of him. His dynamic, charismatic personality is the reason why they selected him to be in that video. And he just be himself every day. Okay, okay. And my little, um, my little grandson Brian just loves Skinny Boy Randy because I would show him the videos when he, when I'll pick him up after school. You know, before all of this stuff happened, the pandemic. And by the way, I think it was you, Skinny Boy Randy, that mentioned the name of that sickness, that disease that is all over the world. If you intend to go mon to be monetized. Anything with that C virus, you cannot mention it in your videos. You can't put it in your titles. You can't mention it. Just say the disease that is all over the world or something like that. Because, oh, by the way, I want to share with you all that I got monetized last week. I'm very excited about that. And can you believe when I started doing YouTube videos, I didn't know nothing about monetization. I just did it because my kids were grown, my husband had passed away, I was in this big house by myself, and I wanted to help people. And then I found out you can get monetized. So why not make a little money, make $30 or $40 every month and buy me another fruit tree and show you all how to grow them? Thank you. Thank you for everybody that's congratulating me. So I want to share that with you because I had no idea you cannot use that disease in your videos. So all the ones that I made about my emergency garden, thank you, Miss Grando. Thank you, Miss Christy Love, Game Nerd, Miller's Garden, uh, Kathleen Elliott, Buttercup, Barefruit Garden, Elizabeth Washington. Tun, Love Skinned Hair, Louisiana Garden Guru, Kendrick Spirit, of course, Skinny Boy Randy, Whole New Perspective, Tracy Ann Jackson, everybody. If I admitted you, you guys know I love you all. And thank you for wishing me uh, congratulations. Uh oh, Mama, Sister, Daughter, didn't do it again. Hey, cheers with my grape juice. And you know, I stole that from Leah Farmer, but I couldn't say guava. Couldn't take everything from him. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Green Organic Love. I will email you to tell you how you can get this monetized. Very good. Thank you. I need all the help I can get. Because, like I said, we've been on quarantining in our own home so my children who are very uh, good with the computers and stuff are the people that I rely on but I did all of this myself guys applying to get monetized uh, you know just, just learning how to do everything even this live today you know uh, some people helped me over the phone and told me I could do it and, and gave me a pep talk and I'm not going to call their names out because I didn't discuss with them mentioning their names but I was so excited that I was able to do it, okay? And I'm going to confess to you all that I'm going to be getting more in front of the camera 
Um, I just don't like being in front of the camera. I ain't gonna go into the reasons why, but I'm just saying I, I just like to video what I've done and, and it's, it's kind of rinky and shaky and I'm gonna do more. I bought this tripod that this is sitting on. I'll raise it up and let you see that, you know, it can move. So I'm going to, uh, I'm gonna do more. That's my promise to you. You all have been so supportive of me and it just makes me want to give more back to you. So I'm going to, I'm going to thank you. Somebody say, yeah, we love to see you, mama, sister, daughter. Thank you, garden love. That's my promise to you. Let me, let me just share this with you. I'm getting kind of a little emotional and I don't want to, but. This disease has taught me that I can do more than I thought I could do. Because I relied on my grandchildren to hand me this, bend down, get this. I've had to do it all. March, April, now we into May. Without any help, other than the 10 minutes my son was over here putting the shade cover on the, on the, uh, greenhouse and I'm not saying he didn't want to help me they just said that we need to stay separate so that I wouldn't get sick that was the first time I let them boss me because I knew it was for a good reason but um I've been able to do so much more than I thought I could do and I just thank God and I thank you all for watching my videos because you encourage me with your comments and I don't know if you all notice, but I go back and I answer every one of them, except if it's a spam, I kind of ignore those. But I try to acknowledge everybody because I'm retired. And when my heart get real heavy watching this stuff on TV, I mean, guys, I got cable, I got HBO, I got Netflix. I'm supposed to be living my life like it's golden. So that's why I got all that stuff. Do you know my TV has not been turned on for a couple weeks? Because I can't stand to look at it. Because it's so heavy out here. Thank you, Land Farmer. Thank you so much. Cheers. So we have to tune some of that out. Turn it off sometimes. And think about what's important. Think about our loved ones. So you all know I'm growing all that food, extra food that I did in my emergency garden. Because lead farmers showed us those concrete uh, planters. My husband was a carpenter. Mm -hmm. I never picked up a power tool. But I can use them now. I gave all his stuff away. When he passed, what my sons didn't want, I gave it away. I didn't even sell it. I just gave it to somebody I know is going to use it. Should have kept some. But I'm glad I did. So now I bought me a reciprocating saw. I'm testifying now. I have a jigsaw. I have a circular saw. I have a cordless drill with the bits. Now my sister bought me that. I got like a, a power a weed whacker in between when the landscapers come in. I can't even think of all the stuff that I have. My children brought me a leaf chipper, a mulcher. I bought my own stuff, a wood chipper. Cause sometimes, let me give you a side note about chipdrop.com. Sometimes the arborists that they use don't have the best equipment, don't grind the wood chips all the way up. So I bought me a wood chipper that I could put the smaller, uh, the larger pieces and chip them up. But these, these are things that I never did. I never worked with any power tools. I was the, uh, the oldest girl of five brothers. So I was raised in a household with a lot of boys. We didn't, I didn't do manly things. I was a cosmetologist that wore the, the fake nails and the lipstick and the hair. You have to look the part. If you're a salesman, you can't have the raggediest car on the block. So you, I had to be a grandma girl. I wore the hair extensions and the eyelashes and all that stuff. So I never picked up power tools, but those days are over. I had to learn how to do some things for myself. Mm -hmm. I'm proud of myself too. I really am. Sometimes, sometimes I look back and I go like, dang, I did that. She did that. I feel like Tiffany Haddish. She did that. Okay? So, 
Um, I just said all that to say that. If you're a single woman out there, you can do this too. There's a young lady that just blows my mind. Star Duster 2. That lady is doing it. And what I love about Star Duster 2, and if you all haven't checked her channel out, please check out her channel. She's doing some incredible things. And what I love about her, she shares her, I don't want to call them failures, the things that don't go so well. Because let me tell you something, all gardeners do things that don't go so well. They might try to fool you and make you think that everything's all peaches and green and they got these incredible green thumbs, but I'm here to tell you that's not true. We all do things that we wish we could take back. I kill peach trees by overwatering them. Mm -hmm. I'm not afraid to tell you. I, I learned though, I learned that they can't take wet feet. Cherry trees are another trees that can't take wet feet. And where I live in Mesquite, Texas, in Dallas County, from February to about March, I mean, uh, uh, May, we have a very rainy period. Then we go into our drought. And I have standing water in my backyard. That's why I don't do in-ground planting. I have raised beds or elevated beds, trees in containers, until they get strong enough to handle swimming around in a lot of water, the roots. Then I put them in the ground. But I kill trees, and that's why I like Stark Brothers, because they give you a year guarantee, no question asked. Ison's Brothers, a year guarantee, no questions asked. So I murdered a lot of trees. And uh, I, <laughs> the first year that I had my um, persimmon, uh, Fuyu persimmon, I thought squirrels came and ate up all of my fruit. And led Farmer 73 because I woke, I went out there one morning and all the fruit was gone. And I read, I, I made a video and ran in the house and got my phone. I made a video and I said, uh, uh, please help me, help me find out what happened to my fruit. And Led Farmer 73 made a video just for me. Go back and look at his catalog. He said, Miss sure nobody stole your fruit with no squirrels. Look down on the ground, you're gonna see these little flat things at the bottom. Your tree was new. Fool you presented. It was new. You planted it in the ground. It was trying to get adjusted to the transfer and it couldn't handle the fruit so it dropped. I said, dang, I should have researched some of that before I put this video out making a fool out of myself. But I just said that to say this. We all make mistakes or we all do things that we could have done differently. Maybe I should have kept the food you persimmon in a container like I'm doing now. Usually when I get a new tree now, I leave it in a container for a couple of years. Then I put them in the ground. I got three pawpaw trees. This will be the second year. They're going in the ground next year because they have to be shaded for the first three years. Excuse me. So sometimes I have to move them around, you know, uh, depending on how much uh, sun we get. Because in Mesquite, Texas, we get uh, we can have triple digit temperatures. One year in August, we had 15 days in a row of 108. That's hot. So we have to use a lot of uh, shade cloths and that type of thing. Now I want to move on to still talking about insects. Let me look down here. Who said that? Green Organic Love said she made a whole lot of mistakes. She spent some money. That's right. The best, hey, Boo and Dr. Ricky, the best lessons are the learned lessons. When you start buying trees and you start killing them, you're not going to kill them. You're going <laughs> the next time you're going to find out what you did wrong and you're going to learn. So this is what I use to um, protect my fruit. While, you know, I don't have a lot of apples on my trees, uh, I'm going to protect them with these. I just pull them like this, guys. I don't even tie them. And they stay. Hey, Kathleen Elliott, thank you so much. Cheers, my friend. Everybody, please raise your glass. I've got grape juice in mine. Thank you, Kathleen. So while my trees are small, and they only have like 10 or 15 apples on them, this is how I protect them. You can get these organza bags at the 
the online store will have a lot of merchants. E is the first initial and they have a bay on the end. And you can also get these from the big A online. Design. I don't think I got a hundred of these for ten dollars. So I have some green ones and some blue ones from the years before. These work well. It's something about these. When you go out there, you see a, a, a squirrel has eaten up your uh, your peaches. You only got three. You gonna cover them up. Now this year, I'm gonna have a really good uh, supply or harvest of my gala apple tree. I don't know why that tree is so off. It blooms in in January and has fruit on it in February. If you go back and you look on my videos where my son kept coming over here helping me to save the tree. And we put lights. We put C9 and C7 Christmas decoration lights in it. And then we put frost cloths and sheets on it. But the, the, the C9s, not the LED, the C9s and the C7 would lower your temperature about 10 degrees. So that tree is crazy. So we have, it's loaded. I mean, it has hundreds of pieces of fruit on it, but some of it is still frost damaged. I'm not bagging up that fruit. And no longer will I put a frost cloth on it because now the six other trees are beginning to produce fruit. So between the seven, we'll get enough to make some applesauce and some apple butter and maybe dehydrate and try a little apple wine, okay? So yeah. These will also protect your fruit. Now, I think I've shown everything that I wanted to show. I did. So it's open for questions. How long have I been on here, guys? Because I don't even know. Hello, Trevor from New York City. All right. Thank you, Starduster. You darn right. Oh, I love I love that. Of the garden books. Thank you. Thank you, my friend. I've been on here an hour land. Okay, 61 minutes. So I need to wrap it up, guys, because I don't want to be on here that long. Because I know some of you are in different time zones. And uh, it's getting late. So, please, tell me, do you have any questions about anything that I've covered? What was the name of the book for fruit trees. Yes, ma'am. It's called How a uh, How No Grow a Little Fruit Tree. Grow a little fruit tree. You got a lot of information about apples, apricots, figs, peaches, cherries, pears, plum, and persimmons. I have all of these trees. Lead farmer is seeing them saying the Japanese murder hornets are here. Oh, thank you for the thumbs up, Lead. That means a lot to me. Now, thank you, Sardust. If you would put in your grow zone and if you have a channel, put your name in your, or your channel's gonna show up with your name. Put where you are, because this community is growing and we all want to help each other. And there's enough gardening uh, tips out there that we all can share and help one another. Don't listen to one person or two people. Listen to as many gardeners as you can. Oh, thank you. Cheers, Miss Louisiana Gardening Guru. Thank you so much. Thank you. Put your gardening zone and put yes if you have a channel. Yes. I love how Bear Fruit Gardening did that um, the other day. Yes, I've been hearing about that that um, bug that's coming from China. I saw it on um, um, the AP. I saw it on the AP, Associated Press. Do you keep your fruit trees in the original? No, 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 mm -mm, no. I pile them up right away. Some of my containers are 40 gallon, 25 gallon, I don't put nothing in less than 15. Thank you, mama, sister, daughter. Thank you so much. You in 8A like me, mama, sister, daughter. Garden of Eden is in there in, uh, in Denver. All right. Bear Fruit Gardening has a, a channel. Check her out, guys. Born to Grow. Wonderful channel. Roster Man. 
has a channel in Central Texas, put yes if you have a channel. You guys know Lead has a channel. Nick Thomas, he's in the middle of the map. <laughs> he had one guy's one 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 video so sexy. I told him I think I need a cigarette, and I don't smoke. <laughs> Thank you, Garden Love. Thank you so much. Miss Fuller Roll Full Roller is in Zone Seven B. Experimental Gardener is in 7B. Homestead Chick, she has a channel. That's okay. That's okay. I start, I've been a YouTuber since 2015. They don't show my videos uh, that old. They show uh, 2016, and that's it. Some of my videos, when I go back and watch them, I'm going like, why did I even upload that? <laughs> But just put them on there because you will see your growth and not necessarily growth as a gardener, but growth as a content presenter. You will learn from that. So don't don't be ashamed. Go in there and put what you're doing. On YouTube, they have videos from a year ago. It is a Japanese hornet. Some guys even let it stay on purpose. The Chinese might have brought it here but it is from japan okay thank you for that information and yes garden love oh man i'm so proud of this sister her music her artwork her content is just beautiful i just i'm just in awe of you miss green organic love i have a juicer in my shopping cart at that big a store you made me want to buy one. <laughs> yes, you did that this morning. Homestead Chick did a video this morning, but my kids tore that video up. I said, no, not today. Well, tomorrow is always another day. Oh, who, where is um the guava lady? She was in here earlier. She is doing expair on her uh, some of her fruit vines and trees. And uh, the bull, the bull and Dr. Ricky are growing their trees. I don't even know if I'm saying it correctly, but they, they're taking the branches and they're training them to uh, grow out uh, horizontal as opposed to, you know, like the shape of a tree. Can you show me the bottle for the cabbage worm? Can you see that? Monterey BT. Somebody wants to do a cooking channel. Very good. Yeah, Garden Love. Thank you, Lad. Garden Love grows those trees like that. She's a bad little sister. Very good content. Okay. Any other bottles you guys want to see? Okay, well, I'm going to sign off. I want to just let you all know that, you know, God loves you. I love you, too. I appreciate you all making this uh, first live very successful to me. And I will uh, be right back at you next Monday, same time, same station. And I'll try to have something, some good pearls from Cheryl that I can share with you. But again, I love you guys. Thank you so much. Good night. Good night, Nick. Good night, mama, sister, daughter. Good night, Kathleen. Good night, seed to seed, lady, lad. Thank you for gracing us, beautiful lady, lad. Lad Farmer, Homestick Chick, Tracy Ann Jackson, Star Duster, Bear Fruit Gardening, Homestead Chick, Elizabeth Washington, my three and me. Must be three kids. Kendrick Spirits, Anita, Miss Grando, Love Skin and Hair, Trevor, Kathleen, Mr. Bull and Dr. Ricky, Tara, J. Raj, of course, Leah Farmer, Alan, Kid Allen, Kathleen Elliott, Christy Love, Game Nerd Mom, Garden of Eden, Miss Full Roller, Betty Jones, Buttercup, Wanda B, Stardust the Two, you darn right. Love it. You darn right. Get green Organic Love, The Lady For Real, Miss Lady For Real, Tara and Lisa Aiden's Garden Lax. Garden Lax? 
Anita or, or Anista 426. I've seen you in other um, lives. A fish and loaves life. You are a true blessing. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. My three and me, thank you. Sandra Garrett, we love you. I love you too, sweetie. All right, guys. Till next Monday. And I'll be coming tomorrow afternoon with fruit. No, Tuesday's fruit. Jay Wise, thank you. I'm out, guys. Thank you so much. Bye now.